check out what I got. It's a Weller Zero Smog um, Fume Extractor. Got this for like a quarter of the retail price. Super duper cheap from a uh, Element 14 clearance sale. Let's check it out. This is probably one of the best uh, f soldering fume extractors on the market, not just for soldering, but for anything. You know, it's got the HEPA filter and uh, whatnot. Yeah, I thought um, I would just, uh, it was so cheap, I couldn't pass it up. Uh, the upgrade for my uh, cheapy, I think I might have done a video on it. If I have, I'll link it in. Um, it's just, you know, a cheap, uh, probably Vivo brand or something. Um, cheap eBay thing, got an Aussie plug. Um, and, but the Weller is uh, one of the, you know, industry standard bits of uh, fume extractor kit that's nice there's a nice metal ring around that i like that it's not just all plastic and there is our snaky snake that feels really good quality it comes out and compresses in that feels really very nice i i like that super flexible uh that is all plastic um end stops but as you saw oh no 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 there's some metal some metal in there not sure what's going on there but there's something some sort of metal inside there nice we get a screw and a holder i don't know what is that designed to like screw into your bench and there it is it's rather uh, unassuming um just got some metal clips here and we've got our ports on the top so you can uh, presumably have like two arms uh for two different stations so let's open up and see what we get there is our, wow, that is chunky. Look at that. Uh, that is enormous. So we've got a first, um, like, filter thing here. And then we've got the large, oh, man, is, is that that deep? Is it that deep? It's like more than 100 mil deep. That's going to have a massive surface area on it. Wow. Anyway, yeah, so this is, fold, this is the folded um, HEPA filter material in there so it's you know it's it's folded like that so there's very deep grooves to get maximum surface area because your airflow is all about your and there's yeah carbon granules in there as well sorry i can't show you that that's just styrofoam that's a bit cracked now i've got like all black crud from the in fact check it out look at that i got black granular crud on my on the surface here um wow that's interesting i think i'll wipe all that off i presume that's all come down from the carbon granules inside the filter here so i i actually haven't checked <laughs> how much these filters cost probably a lot but i don't do a huge amount of soldering i'm not doing production soldering anymore um so yeah you know it, it'll probably last a long long time so there it is economy filter oh i wanted the premium filter i didn't know there was an option it's it's probably just uh standard anyway yeah airflow comes down from the top and out the bottom uh obviously there you go uh is that where's that made made in hungary look at that all the best filters are made in hungary hi to all my hungarian view viewers that's a bobby dazzler um so yeah i'll have to have a look at uh whether or not you can, like, you have to use, well, you don't have to use the genuine ones. Are there any uh, third-party ones available? But that is a big-ass filter. That is absolutely enormous. That's going to have a massive surface area in there, plus all the granules. Sorry, I can't take it apart. Maybe one day when I actually replace it. So, anyway, um, so this is going to have a giant, giant fan in here. And that's all she wrote. There's going to be... What else have we got? Oh, there we go. Oh, look. There's a little, like, RJ11 there. That's not the power connection, is it? No. <laughs> Thankfully not. There's your, there's your ISC with a switch. It's all fused. No wackers. And made in Hungary as well. Absolutely fantastic. And, uh, oh, okay, the external thing's a speed controller, is it? Well, I didn't get anything with it, so I guess it's just one speed. Um, so, yeah, I presume... That, that is some sort of speed controller. I might have to look um, in the box to see if I got a speed controller for it, but I don't think so. I, can't they, like, put a button on it? Anyway, um, yeah, I'll give it a wiper dipe first, and then we'll uh, assemble it. Oh, all right, you know I couldn't resist getting that, having a peek. The fan on the bottom, 
Whoa! It's an Impst. M E M E B M Pabst uh, fan. Look at that. That's a Bobby Dazzler, isn't it? Wow. That's something. Go, you know, it's an RG128. And look at that. Rubber baby buggy bumper. Compliant on there. That is going to be, uh, hopefully, well, one of the things I'm hoping for is that this is uh, lower noise than my cheap eBay one. Look at that big die cast frame around that. The giant big outlet there. And uh, it's earthed, of course. Very nice. Yeah, even got a nice mains filter down in there. Beautiful. Oh, boy. Anyway, it's just this thing just oozes quality. No wonder you pay like a thousand bucks for a fan, basically. A fan and a filter. Um, yeah, it's Bobby Dazzler. Got a spare connector. Not sure what that goes off to. And that down in there is our little controller board. Nice. Little uh, surface mount mains transformer there. And there's some other micro on the other side. There's a card edge thing on the top. Uh, that'd be for production programming, testing or whatnot. Um, and, well, yeah. I still don't know where the external uh, controller... Oh, okay. There, Sorry, there is a button on the front. It's actually a uh, little soft um, button. It's a <laughs> membrane button. <laughs> right, I didn't see it there. Oh, it wasn't obvious, but yeah, that's that button there, and I can push that. No worries. All right, <clears throat> so I think the external controller is optional. So that just goes on there. There we are, no... Uh, like alignment slots or anything. Yeah. I assume it just pushes hard down. Yeah, it does. Jeez, that's, that's tighter than a nun's nasty. And height-wise, check it out. I'm like a width of a fag paper under 5'9", so there you go. Um, that's, that's pretty well. No, oh, some extra length. Look at that. That's what she said. And just at about chin height with uh, full compression like that. Beauty. My old one's about 70 dBA on maximum there. I'm going to leave the uh, sound level meter on the bench. And the quietest mode, let's call that 66. Eh, 65 and a half. So there's my previous one sitting under there. I think it's a Vivor or something. Anyway, it's, yeah, it's like one of the, uh, just the cheap um, eBay ones. It does okay, but eh, it's a bit loud and, well, you know, and ain't a weller. On the lowest setting here, this is about 10 dBA quieter. If I try and attach this, it's a bit, it's a bit tricky. It's got, ah, uh, it's got, yeah, you've got to compress it. It's got that, that metal ring is compressive. So, aha, there you go. Oh, wow, how do you push that in? Anyway, uh, the first thing I notice about this is that it's just floppy. Ah, uh, it's, it's no good when it's floppy. Um, that's what she said. So, I, yeah, I'm going to have to, like, rest it over my Tagano or something. Um, that's a bit disappointing. Uh, um, like, this is super flexible, which is fantastic. But then I guess that's why they give you the ring, to, like, you know, this is, like, designed for, you know, a permanent setup on a production bench uh, for example and you'd put it like like the shelf above and you'd have the clip there and it'd clip in and stuff but yeah and I haven't pushed that all the way in that seems tricky because one of the ideas with the Weller is that that's why you might be wondering why why is this flat like this it's designed so that it like sits flat on your bench like that and you do your soldering under there, but not everyone does that because you might have it elevated up on a stand. It might be a larger item or whatever, like, you know, on uh, clamps or whatever. So, yeah, um, it just doesn't really hold up there. So that's disappointing. I, I love that design. If you are actually soldering, you know, stuff right down here, um, then you won't even need that. Like, you, you could have it on the lower setting, and that's easily going to be enough to uh, suck all the fumes up. So, no worries. That's actually a really nice, really nice design. But, yeah, I, I just, I want the stiffy option. Can I have the stiffy option, please? As much as I like the flexible, I want a good stiffy. Uh, I finally... you got to sort of, like, wiggle it into place like that, and it goes on. So that is, like... That is really very, very nice, but, but, 
Um, yeah, I'm going to need something to hold it up, definitely. And uh, yeah, that uh, bracket thing is designed to go onto the screw into the back of the uh, bench to hold the uh, hose in vertical position when it comes off the back side of the bench, but I'm not going to bother to use that. Second highest speed, 63 dBA. And even on the second one, that's providing quite some suction. Third speed, we're talking about 65 dBA. And on maximum, we're about 70 dBA there. So on par with the other unit, except it does actually go much quieter on the uh, lower levels though, which is nice for me. And well, whoa, I can suck a golf ball through a garden hose. Right, so what I've done is I just temporarily uh, bodge it onto my uh, Tagano microscope here. I don't know if that'll be the uh, final solution. I can make it look a bit neater than the electrical uh, tape. But you know, when I'm soldering under here, I'm generally soldering under the microscope, right? So um, let's let's try it out, shall we? Let's get some old school 5 core 366 flux uh, uh, lead, none of that lead free rubbish, and let's uh, let's see what happens here, shall we? Oh yeah, yeah, that's sucking all right. That is sucking. Oh, I shouldn't put that on my nice anti-static mat. So yeah, if I'm soldering, like that is not that is not under it. That is actually under my lens here, which is actually not under the tip. It's a good couple of inches away from that. So that's handling that. No problems whatsoever. Woohoo! Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, that really sucks. But that is on maximum. Let me turn it down. I was just able to kick the switch under there with my foot. It's a little bit hard. It would have liked to have seen like a larger switch uh, contact area, you know, because you want to use your foot. Anyway, that is on the absolute lowest. You, you probably can't even hear that. Uh, maybe you can, but that is really low. I like that. Like, from a uh, YouTuber point of view. Okay, so I'm still under the... Uh, under the microscope here all right so i haven't moved it at all okay so it's in the same location and yeah yeah it's just not gonna yeah it's just not gonna get it you really need to be under it like oh no nah, even if you're under it even if you're under it this sort of distance nah it it it, it is designed to be worked under like that so yeah and yeah once you're down to you know 100 mil below it, it's going to start not picking that up. But that is on the lowest. I mean, you can barely hear that. Okay, so I turned it up one notch. The noise from that, very acceptable. And of course, you could enclose. If it was too much, you could always enclose the thing underneath the bench in like a soundproof uh, enclosure if you wanted to, to help out in that regard. Um, so, there we go. There we go. Yeah, the second setting, that's going to get most of that from that sort of height that's pretty good yeah yeah i would i would typically use that mode i think bring it out a bit further under the microscope so it's still not it's still not directly under it it's you know it's about that far out sorry you know you can't get the right angle here i can it's hard to get my tripod in here but that's doing a pretty good job that's doing pretty decently yeah don't mind that at all. That's going to get, you know, 95% of it. Nice. That's a bit better camera angle. Okay, let's have a look. So you can actually see that I can still see there's no uh, interference with my Tagano lens here. So it's a little bit back uh, from the lens. And you can drop that down. Height-wise, we're talking about 130 millimeters there. Um, like from the base of that down to uh, the soldering surface. And... So that is directly squared under there. I mean, I've got it pretty much as close as I can get without uh, disturbing that lens there. And, well, let's have a go. Again, this is on the second highest setting of four. So, which is quite an acceptable sound level. And I'm pretty happy with it. And hopefully, you can see... Can you see the solder? I don't know, I can't see it on the camcorder screen. But yeah, so even if I bring it out here like this, it's still, oh no, but maybe, oh yeah, but we are on the second setting, so the second quietest setting, which is pretty good. 
and we're on the quietest level now and that's fantastic for filming I don't know if you can hear that uh, but uh, my microphone's not pointed in the right direction I can shove it around that's better the mic is now facing me so I'm not sure if you can hear that I can hear it but oh geez it's it's not distracting at all so for filming um, so let's put this is directly under the center of the lens here that's that's still gonna do it that's gonna do it at wow oh, there's a little bit that's escaping but not much not much beautiful yeah little bit if I bring it more towards the back side nah nah it's still no nah, it, it it's really designed to be yeah I'm not sure if you're seeing that laminar flow there if I put that black behind it yeah that, that might be better on camera and there there you go yeah so you've got to almost get it up to that level so that quietest mode is really designed for this thing to be sitting down on the bench but there's no problem turning it up to that second mode no problems whatsoever so yeah as soon as you get below the bottom surface of this it starts not being starts not being enough not quite enough so yeah, I just have to up that a bit so I'll use my foot to give it a little nudge there we go second level Ooh, you can see it swelling around there second level gets most of it you can see it like I'm not sure if you're seeing the swirling action there it's really quite something so yeah that that works really well and yeah I can't really tilt it any more forward than that because of the uh, of, of the lens of course if you're not soldering under a microscope digital or uh, analog then uh, no worries right you can get it right close to the work but I prefer to have a nice big working distance there because I've got a nice big working distance on my microscope there and but that is lower that is better than my old one let me tell you that works really well very happy with that so that Weller sucks well get it I'm here all week the Weller sucks well <laughs> anyway it's fantastic <laughs> yeah definitely here all week anyway yeah that's that's great but you know this is like a real expensive item but I got it dirt cheap so yeah it's definitely going to replace my other little cheapo so that's a winner winner chicken dinner very happy with that thumbs up to the uh, Weller if you can afford it of course probably don't ask the price on the uh, filters I'll add it up here in an overlay what the price for the filter is probably cost me more than what the <laughs> original unit costs oh, damn it anyway catch you next time and here is my eBay unit which I still think is pretty good like I stand by my original uh, assessment uh, of this thing is just fume extractor no name fume extractor um, you know it, it does a reasonable job but it's louder it's not as good the filters are probably going to be uh, cheaper that's for sure so yeah anyway I'll link in that video it's got like a two-stage uh, filter thing the Weller one looks way better uh, way better quality construction way better everything um, but um, yeah this does have a stiffer neck on the thing which does actually hold itself in place which is both good and bad um, so yeah anyway I, I still don't mind it um, so yeah I've got myself a secondary uh, unit for a second workstation might put this uh, down in the dungeon actually um, so yeah but uh, nah, I'm going to uh, stick with the Weller definitely for the main lab because it's a winner winner chicken dinner <laughs> and it want to be for the price <laughs>